Hello everyone, and welcome to Fictional Vortex, so we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto inherited the power of the greatest fighter 10. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. The sun was setting in Konoha, projecting an orange light in the sky. Despite the last vestiges of sunlight, the streets were illuminated with many bright lights. Most people were in the street, either heading or already in the central square of the village, where many decorations were in place, along with stands of food and games. Such was the Kyubi festival, which despite the name, did not celebrate the Kyubi, but rather, its defeat and death. One person in particular, however, was not in the festival, having fun as most were. In the darkening streets of Konoha, a blonde boy was running from three men, who chased him branding half-empty bottles. It was a normal occurrence in this date, which also was the boy's birthday. Such hostile treatment was not limited to his birthday, as little Naruto had always been treated harshly by most of Konoha's residents. It was, however, uncommon to such treatment to escalate into physical levels. Except in this date, when the memories of the Kiyubi attack were stronger in the minds of the villagers, and the alcohol clouded the better judgment of some people, whose temper was worse or whose losses were greater. Naruto's opinion was that the villagers viewed him as some sort of bad omen, since he had been born few seconds before the great beast attacked Konoha. Or as a painful reminder of what had transpired in that night, and all the loss of loved one the survivors had suffered. He ran until he reached a dark alley and hid on a space between two buildings. The men reached the alley soon after he disappeared in the darkness. The dim light and their inebriated state helped Naruto, as they were unable to find him and simply decided to forget about the demon brat and go back to partying. Why, why they hate me? I have done nothing, though the kid as he walked back to his home. He went directly to bed and fell asleep as soon as his head touched the pillow. Drip, 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 Naruto woke up in unfamiliar surroundings. Looking around, he found himself in some sort of sewer. Uh, how did I get here? I remember going sleep in my bed, Naruto asked himself looking around in hopes of finding any clue. Come here, human, a deep voice boomed through the sewer, filled with malice and power. Not having any other option, Naruto followed the voice through the corridors of the maze-like sewer, until he reached a giant gate. Two big, red eyes glared back at him. Hello, human, the same voice said, from inside the cage. W who are you? asked a frightened Naruto. I, am the great Kyubi no Yoko. The voice introduced itself, flaring its chakra to illuminate the interior of the cage, revealing a gargantuan red-orange fox with nine tails. And no way. The fourth killed the Kiyubi five years, Naruto said, both to the fox and to himself. Foolish mortal. No measly human can kill me, the beast sneered. Instead, that hairless ape simply sealed me away, in you. What? Sealed you? Naruto shouted in surprise, in M.E. Yes. The fox's voice adopted a more subdued tone, filled with anger. That thrice damned mortal summoned the Shinigami himself in order to stop me. B but why he sealed you in me? asked Naruto, trying to get over his shock. That I do not know, and I couldn't care less, said the fox in an annoyed tone. What I do care about, in the other hand, is my freedom. I can't let you out. You'll destroy Konoha, screamed Naruto, pointing an accusing finger at the fox. Silence, fool, the fox ordered, with no little amount of killer intent directed at the boy. Now, I have no intention of destroying this stupid village. The fox snorted. In all honesty, I have no intention of interacting with you, rambunctious hairless apes, in general. Why not? Nothing stopped you in the first time, Naruto stated, staring defiantly at the fox. You know nothing, boy. You humans only want to use my power to your own ends, and I will be damned if I let any stupid tailless monkey have it? The biju snarled. I still won't free you, you're still an evil demon, Naruto protested. Be quiet, insolent primate, it ordered. What if I strike a deal with you? The creature offered. What kind of deal? Naruto inquired, both suspicious and interested. If you free me, I will become more powerful than ever before and I will use that power to compensate you for your efforts, as insignificant as they might be. Whoa, 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 easy there, fuzzy, said Naruto, waving his arms in front of his body, 
much to the fox displeasure what do you mean more powerful this seal has been leeching my chakra and giving it to you and if you free me i will recover all the chakra you've gained throughout those seven years and the chakra i used when i attacked your insignificant village the fox explained when i do my chakra reserves will increase as substantially and i will become the jubi no yoko and how are you going to compensate for me naruto asked with narrow eyes if the kiyubi was going to be more powerful than before who knows what kind of things it could offer i will use my powers to summon ten of the strongest beings from this and from other worlds and i shall give their power to you other worlds what do you mean naruto asked confused and surprised you did not really think you piss ants were the only ones did you the fox sneered as a matter of fact there are dozens of thousands other worlds and dimensions parallel to this one the fox explained and each of those worlds has its own particular energy which binds them together and allows life to prosper in each world the dominant species harness this energy in a different way the nine-tailed demon continued you naked monkeys learn to harness this energy in the form of chakra and manipulate it in order to create your jutsus and what are the other worlds naruto asked his curiosity getting the better of him that i do not know as i have never traveled to other worlds the fox shrugged i cannot guarantee that the people summoned here will be any more powerful than one of your ninja or even if they will be at their level it admitted i can however give you my word that the strongest being available at the time and place will be brought here okay say i believe in you in that naruto stated how can i trust you a demon fox with bad reputation to keep your end of the deal ah but you can i am a kitsune and we never break our promises now just to mess with your subpar mind who else can you trust truly the old man you call grandfather lied to you not only about me but i find hard to believe that he as the commander of this mess cannot pull any sort of records to find out how are your parents the fox said with derision you have simply to ask which female is pregnant in the time around my arrival and you'd narrow down the list naruto though about what the beast said and he had to agree with it the more he thought about the fox's proposition the more he found that it was better than enduring konoha's hate forever okay deal he said after what seemed like an eternity to the kiyubi at least what should i do come here and rip this seal off said the fox with barely contained excitement naruto walked up to the bars and extended his hand to the seal but before he could touch it a hand grabbed his arm what do you think you are doing son asked the owner of the hand who naruto recognized as the fourth hokage w what son asked naruto with wide eyes yandaimi come here so i can rip you to pieces the fox demanded well i think i'll just stay here then right naruto the deceased hokage joked i will kill you when i'm freed mark my words screamed the beast shouting all kinds of threats the blonde cage ignored the irate fox and simply turned to face naruto i'm sorry son but i can't let you free the kiyubi i'm your son asked a still shocked naruto his shock quickly turned to anger you bastard you sealed the kiyubi in me it's all your fault listen naruto minato tried to placate him i know that the villagers may be bad but surely shut up the younger blonde cut him off you left me all alone with the kiyubi in my gut alone what are you talking about asked a confused minato what about your mother i have no mother exclaimed naruto what kashina is not alive asked the former hokage well that explains it son i know you had it bad but bad you think naruto pushed the hokage and ran to the cage and ripped about half the seal before minato pulled him away although he managed to fix the seal minato could feel his chakra fading please son do not free the kiyubi it wasn't his fault but there's he completely disappeared his message never finished there was a full minute of tense silence naruto kept staring what the place where his father no the yandaimi hokage he was no father had been standing his brain still processing everything that had transpired the kiyubi was looking around nervously as if waiting for some other sudden appearance now kid you have two choices believe me or obey your father said the fox which will you choose i'll free you if you give me the power first said naruto crossing his arms i cannot do it with this seal in place 
Kiyubi began, rip about half of it and I will show you your power. Naruto walked and ripped half of the seal. Soon the sewer started to shake as the Kiyubi's cage started to glow and a new tail grew in the now ten-tailed fox. Lo and behold, the ten, from inside the cage, ten figures walked out. The first one was a robbed man with silver, spiky long hair and glowing purple eyes. The second one was tall and muscular, with a long black hair and was only wearing only loose white pants. The third one was a tall, black-haired man wearing a dark gray suit under a crimson trench coat and fedora hat, along orange sunglasses. The fourth one was yet another man wearing a trench coat, but his was black with metal pauldrons, and he had long silver hair. The fifth one was clad in white and had a very pale skin, with black hair and what seemed to be half a kabuto. The sixth one was another silver-haired man wearing a trench coat, but his hair was short and his coat was royal blue. The seventh wore all black ancient ninja suit, with a skull-like face mask. The eighth was a young man with shaved head, wearing a worn-out black training outfit. The ninth one was man wearing a leather jacket over a gray hottie. The tenth and last one wore a black suit coat and fedora hat, along with a dress shirt and black tie. Now, shall you introduce yourselves to the kid? Now, shall you introduce yourselves to the kid? The first one gave a step to the front. I am the sage of the six paths. The second one walked to the sage's side, I am Brawly. The third one stepped forward, my master called me Alucard. The fourth one stepped to their side, my name is Sephiroth. The fifth stepped forward, Ulkiora Schiffer. The sixth one stepped forward, my name is Virgil. The seventh one stepped forward, my name is Noob Saibot. The eighth one stepped to their side, my name is Galen Merrick. The ninth one stepped forward, Alex Mercer, the tenth one stepped forward, I'm Kuradu Akabane. There was a silence was the ten newcomers stared at Naruto, who in turn just stared back at them. So, Alucard began. Who are you? He pointed at Naruto. Who's that? He pointed at the Jubi. And why are we on a sewer? Uh, Naruto paused and looked at the fox. A little help here? The fox pinched the bridge of its muzzle. Sai I have summoned you ten here because you were some of the greatest warriors of your realms, though it's disappointing you're all, ape-like. The fox muttered the last part. And I will give your powers to the kid in front of you, and your minds will be imprinted into his in order teach him how to use it, whoever it is your decision to keep your conscience here. That's an, interesting, development, Sephiroth said after a second of silence. Indeed, agreed Akabane, but you didn't answer Alucard San's other questions, he pointed out. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, believe it, and the fuzzy is the cue I mean, Jubi no Yoko, Naruto explained. Jubi? I believe you are mistaken young one, the Jubi was defeated decades ago, the sage interjected. You mistake me by the former Jubi, sage, I am the new one, born a few minutes ago, said the fox, but you originally made me the nine tails, the sage nodded at the Jubi's explanation. Ah, I see, the Rinnegan wielder said, and why, from all the places in the galaxy, you choose a sewer to gather us? Galen asked Naruto, as he looked around. I have no idea, but Fuzzy might know, the blonde said, pointing at the Jubi, who sighed. This is your mindscape, human, a physical representation of your mind. The former Kiyubi explained, why it is a sewer, I have no idea. And why should we give our power to such puny human? asked Brawly crossing his arms as he looked down on Naruto, his power level is even below average. That choice is not yours, the fox said, as soon as I am released, your powers will be his powers. Maybe then his power level will become something worth notice after that. And why exactly you're given out power to a kid? asked Virgil, that hardly seems wise. We have a deal, and I honor my deals, this kid is going to free me from this wretched cage, the fox clarified, but as I said, as soon he gets your powers, you can leave to wherever you came from. Do we get to fight if we stay? asked Alucard. I've been itching for a good fight for centuries now. That would be impossible, as you would only exist in the mind in the boy's mind. I have a name, you know? Naruto asked indignantly, it's not, kid, boy, or human. So do I, and it is not, fuzzy, as you so eloquently put it, was the annoyed reply and I am not fuzzy. 
Could we please focus in the more important matters? Ulkiora spoke for the first time. Of course, before the fox could continue, there was a loud ringing through Naruto's mind. What the hell? asked Naruto, covering his ears. That would be that blasted alarm of yours, explained the Jubi. It's morning already. Yes, it is, the fox replied. While you are awake, make yourself useful and try to find a way out of this pathetic village. You do not really want to release in the middle of the street, do you? Escape the village? Naruto repeated in shock, but then I will never be Hokage. What is a Hokage? asked Sephiroth with a raised eyebrow. He is the strongest ninja and leader of the village, believe it, Naruto exclaimed. So, he is your master? Alucard asked, but it was lost as Naruto began to feed. Look, I gotta go. See you later, Naruto said as he fade away from his mindscape. Now, shall we discuss what powers the kid will receive? asked the Jubi with a grin. Real world? Uh? asked Naruto as he got up, rubbing his eyes, I wonder, is it all a crazy dream? No, it was not kid, said a voice inside Naruto's head. Gah! Naruto jumped out of bed, I'm hearing voices, inside his mind, ten men and a fox face palmed. You are an idiot, said the voice, it is me, Jubi no Yoko. Oh, hey fuzzy, Naruto said happily, I am not fuzzy, exclaimed the fox in his mind, and you don't need to speak out loud, just think and we will hear you. You're fuzzy, though Naruto, am not, screamed the ten-tailed fox. Sheesh, don't get your tails in a bunch, I was just checking. Naruto proceeded to take a shower and make a breakfast, so, what you doing over there? Nothing you need to concern yourself with, you will know in due time, the fox said before cutting the mental link. After Naruto was done eating and changing his clothes, he headed to the Hokage Tower, hey, fuzzy, do you think I should tell the old man Hokage about you? Of course not, you stupid monkey, said the fox, the old man will freak out if you tell you've been talking to me. Hey, Naruto though as he walked to the Hokage Tower, I wonder if the old man knows anything about my mother, the boy wondered, which is followed by, he could have told me about the fox or my father. Naruto waved to the secretary, a nice lady who would always talk to him while he waited for the old man and entered the Hokage's office, where said Hokage was doing some paperwork. Hey old man! exclaimed Naruto, making the Hokage smile at the young boy. Hello Naruto-kun, how are you today? Same old, you know, still being hated because of the fox and all, Naruto replied with a fake smile. The Hokage nodded sadly before his mind registered what Naruto said, because of the fox. What are you talking about Naruto? What fox? The cage asked, playing dumb. Ah, you know, fuzzy nine tails, red fur, sealed in me by my father, Naruto said, his smile dropping. So you know, damn, he wasn't supposed to know about his father or the fox, I'll have to ask Inoichi to erase his memories until he's ready. Hey kid, the old man is thinking about erasing you Mamori said a voice in Naruto's head that was not the fox, he's practically broadcasting his thoughts. Galen? That you? Yes, thanks for the heads up? You're welcome kid, listen Naruto, I am a little busy today, but come here tomorrow and we will talk about it, okay? Asked the Hokage? Please, do not speak to anyone else about this. I guess I don't have much of a choice, do I? I guess Fuzzy was right, I have to get out of here. Naruto exited the tower in deep though. His grandfather figure had betrayed him once and tried to do it again. He went to Ichiraku Ramen and ordered a few bowls. So, how am I supposed to escape Konoha? Naruto asked in his mind as he ate his ramen. We give you our powers and you blast your way out said Alucard with a psychotic grin, and kill some people in the process. Any second opinions? Naruto asked with a sweat drop. There were a few seconds of silence. I can help you get outside the village walls undetected, the voice had an eerie echo to it. It's possible to transfer a small part of your power to him, during this day, yes, maybe that can work. But Jubi-san, how are we going to fool those people who have been following Naruto-kun since the Hokage's tower? Even if Saibot San abilities can help, they might give chase, Akabane inquired. If you wait until it's nighttime, I have a way as well, Noob replied coldly. As ordered, Naruto went about his regular daily activities. 
Obeying Jubi's instructions, Naruto went to some place where he could train and burn chakra. The more chakra he used, the more the seal would leech and use to refill his reserves. When that happened, the abilities he needed would leak through the seal. It was 6 pm and Naruto went home, earlier than his usual, but he needed a time to train noob's skills, in order to escape Konoha. He would leave by the east gate, and from there he would go straight to Yu no Kuni. Ukiora would give Naruto a skill to travel faster, in order to escape any pursuit or tracking teams that might be sent. Naruto packed everything he needed, that wasn't much since he had been told that food and clothes wouldn't be a bother after he acquired his powers, which would happen when he was out of the High no Kuni, and therefore, out of Konoha's jurisdiction. Meanwhile, slowly but steady, Ulkiora and Noob's powers passed through the remains of the seal as it took the Jubi's chakra. It was finally night in Konoha, and time to go ahead with their not so carefully put together plan to escape the strongest hidden village. You already learned to animate your shadow, boy, Noob stated, now, open the portal and let's get over it. But how? Will it? The assassin commanded. Naruto focused and tried to will it, without much of success. Then, he had an idea. The boy reached out, felling the darkness. Then, he simply imagined a door opening. Suddenly, Naruto felt himself falling to his back. Despite the surprise, he managed to focus on the shadows and do the technique. Tora blinked. He had just seen the boy fall into the floor, but the boy was standing there, just like before. Must have been the light playing tricks he shook his head. As he did so, he never saw the boy fall apart as if made of water. He was falling. Sinking into something like water, but oily and much less denser. Then, he was suddenly falling forwards, as if gravity had suddenly switched. A dark portal opened in the ground, few inches from Konoha's walls and a blonde boy walked from it. Whoa, weird, Naruto mumbled, shooking his head, no time for it, boy, a different, but just as flat voice sounded, get going. Naruto nodded, and ran to the woods, and as soon as he was out of the line of sight of the guards in the gate, he focused, there was a static sound and, Naruto hit a tree. Oh sweet Kami, boy, you are such an idiot, came the mocking voice of the Jubi. You should look where you are going. Boy, said Ulkiora. You don't say? Sarcasm dripped from Naruto's thoughts. Before he could try again, he felt a hand on his shoulder. Naruto whipped around, to find a chunin looking at him in confusion. He had long, silver hair and wore a bandana like forehead protector. His eyes widened, and the chunin's face morphed into a scowl. Mizuki sensei. Before he could even realize what he was doing, Naruto summoned his shadow. The inky clone tackled Mizuki, and both disappeared into a black hole. The Chunin screamed in surprise, but no one heard as he was already in the shadows. Another black hole spat Mizuki out, he seemed freaked out and bruised, but otherwise fine. And that's not fine, Naruto-kun. He will tell the others Akabane's voice appeared. You have to eliminate him. W what? K kill him? Naruto asked, while he stared in shock as Mizuki got up and snarled at him. Yes. Put you left hand forward, palm facing him, Akabane instructed hastily, as grabbed a kanai and lunge. Naruto clumsily ducked a swipe from Mizuki's kanai, now, say with me. Bloody cross. Naruto's hand spewed blood, as a red, glowing energy cross-shaped pattern appeared on it. Before Mizuki could react, he was cut in four. Naruto stared at Mizuki's bloody four quarters in shock. His right hand was holding his left wrist as blood soaked the palm of his hand. That's an impressive attack, Virgil commented, turning to Akabane, who only smiled politely, when did you pass that to him? Well, I figured Naruto-kun might need to defend himself, so I sent him that with Saibot-san's and Shifra-san's powers. It was really useful, good thinking, really useful, there's nothing like a trail of blood, to find your way home, Alucard stated. Naruto, snap out of it, he was trying to kill you. The Jubi said firmly, but now we have to move, unless you want to kill more people. Calming down, Naruto tried the Sonido again, and with another static boom, he moved. This time to a clearing about 10 miles from Konoha. He repeated the process another 10 times, pausing between 2 or 3 for a quick rest, and he soon reached Yu no Kuni. Passing out because of the stress the Sonido put on his unprepared body, Naruto soon found himself again in his mindscape. Well kid, ready to free me? 
the Juby asked, more politely than he had been before. Well fuzzy, ready to give me power? Naruto shot back with a smirk. Yes, although, there's one more little detail I ought to make you familiar with, the fox state. Like what? Asked Naruto with a frown. Well, your appearance and personality will undergo some changes, the ten-tailed fox explained. Your appearance will change more drastically, and your personality will be 75% you and 25% them. So you're saying I'll change? Naruto asked with wide eyes. Yes. The fox replied. Your body will be physically older and you become more mature and, Kami knows you need, smarter. Not only that, but you will have inhuman strength and, speed, stamina and endurance. The ten-tailed beast listed his abilities. You will have high-speed regeneration and, Psy immortality. Really, that's awesome, he exclaimed happily, for you maybe, but I do not find it amusing that you will become stronger than me. The fox mumbled, more to himself than to the boy, but Naruto heard him anyways. I'll be stronger than you, Naruto asked, haha, take that fuzzy, who's the puny human now? You are, the fox deadpanned, making Naruto face fault, only when I am freed you will receive your powers so a little less conversation, a little more action, please. But what are my other powers? I can't be stronger than you without some super awesome jutsu. I will let you find for yourself, when you free me, said the jubi, putting emphasis on the last part. Fine, fine, sheesh, Naruto muttered was he walked to the seal. Wait, you said I'll become older, how much exactly? The fox shrugged. I do not know. Naruto raised his arm and grabbed the last part of the seal, and ripped it off, the gates of the cage immediately opening and the then men fused in a mass of energy and flew at Naruto as a bright red light filled the mindscape. Real world there was a blast of energy from Naruto's body and a flash of red that soon vanished, revealing the giant ten-tailed fox and a still unconscious and unchanged Naruto. Hum, I should kill him now, he is too powerful and might become a nuisance in the future, the fox mused narrowing its eyes the fox was about to attack naruto with its paw when dark green energy enveloped his body and soon expanded and exploded blasting everything away and making the fox recoil in the middle of a crater was floating a 20 year old man wearing only pants he was very tall about two meters tall and extremely muscular naruto now had long spiky black hair with silver streaks with bangs framing his face naruto's skin was now paler and his whiskers had almost faded he looked around bored, his cat-like pupils perceiving every detail. His cyan eyes turned completely purple with black rings when he saw the juby. What do you think you're doing? He asked, and when he spoke, ten other voices echoed. What do you think you're doing? He asked, and when he spoke, ten other voices echoed. Trying to kill me, juby chan He asked on his distorted voice. Foolish. He looked at his hand and pointed at the juby. Sero. A green beam of energy flew at the giant fox and blasted a hole through its ear. You should know that I am a god, he raised his arms, Shinra Tensai. The giant fox was blasted away from the former blonde and smashed some trees before getting back on its feet and snarling at him. Yes come, entertain me, he said as he spiked his recently acquired Ryatsu, flooding the area, before a sheathed Okatana appeared on his hand. He unleashed the Okatana made a horizontal slash in front of him. Slash, Yamato. As Naruto slashed the air, the blade turned into tiny particles, which dispersed around him. There was a burst of spiritual energy, which seemed to fall around him like green rain. Naruto gained a pair of black bat wings and grew horns. The fox tried to slash him with its claws, but instead of cutting him of in pieces, Naruto's chest just had mild scratches. He just looked uninterested, before he unsheathed Yamato, which was now simply a hilt and made a few slashes, before re-sheathing the sword. With a click, the fox roared as blood poured from injuries that appeared from nowhere. Naruto simply looked at the fox, who was trying to stand the pressure of his power. Naruto smirked, still trying to fight a you don't know true despair, he said to the fox. Allow me to educate you. Segunda Atapa, again Naruto transformed, but this time he was really demonic. His skin was blue with golden lines running through his body. He still had horns, and now he had four insect-like wings one his lower back, with Yamato was sheathed in an appendage on his left arm, one. Do you see now? Do you feel true despair? 
he asked as the fox felt its knees. He extended his hand. Lanza del Relampago. An energy javelin appeared on his hand. The fox roared and tried to slash him again, only to get its claws cut by Naruto's javelin. He disappeared with a static burst. Appearing behind the ten tailed beast, Naruto walked in the air to the fox and slashed one of its tails, cutting it clean. Naruto used Sonido to go in front of the fox, floating at eye level, an arrogant smirk in his face. I will kill you, I swear I'll kill you for this insolence, the fox shouted before opening its mouth and started to gather chakra, forming a giant chakra ball and firing at Naruto. After the technique died down, the fox's eyes widened when Naruto simply stood there, unfazed by the Jubi's Bijudama. Even if the technique wasn't fully charged, no mortal should survive, let alone unscathed. Naruto simply looked uninterested as the Jubi again gathered its chakra, and as soon as the beast fired a bigger and stronger Bijudama, Naruto raised his hand and said, Saro Ascuras. The two techniques met each other but soon Naruto's Saro overpowered the Bijudama and blasted it away. He raised one hand in front of his body, his fingers pointed at the fox. Before it could react, a shower of lightning shot from Naruto's fingertips, literally shocking the Jubi to the core. The lightning ceased as Naruto's hand made a grabbing motion, as if squeezing something invisible. The Jubi started to trash around as it choked, trying to free itself from the invisible hand on its neck. Naruto stared boredly at the trashing fox below him, before an idea hit him. Alucard had dogs, he would have a fox. He gave a smirk that would make Alucard proud and put his left hand up, palm facing the Jubi. The cross shaped scar on his hand glowed an eerie red. Bloody cross. The fox was then cleaved in four. Before its body could disappear, Naruto absorbed all its blood through his feet and red tendrils spread through its flesh as he consumed the biju. A few seconds later, he smirked again. Before he could do anything else, however, darkness claimed him as he passed out, his body started to reverse his hair shortening and his body shrinking. Morning Naruto woke up with sounds of battle and jutsus. He immediately got up and noticed how everything was shorter. His eyes scanned the area, following sounds of battle not far from where he was. He instinctively used a sonido to get to the site of the battle. In the middle of a clearing, a woman on her early twenties, holding a giant clever-like sword was surrounded by about twenty or so men. All wore kiri headbands and regular chunin, jonin uniform. So Naruto couldn't figure out why they were fighting against her. Naruto observed as the woman cleaved one of the shinobi in two with her sword. He then took notice of about ten other bodies in the ground. All seemed killed by the same blade. She slashed another ninja in half before she was hit with a water jutsus that knocked her on a tree. Ha ha, so much for the demoness of the bloody mist. We'll have some fun with you, and then we'll bring your head to the mazukage, traitorous bitch. Said one of the ninja, who he supposed was the leader the others agreeing with him. Naruto growled before jumping between the men and the woman. I don't think so, he said, before holding out his right hand. Blood red energy appeared on his hand, before it took shape of a sword. With demonic speed, Naruto appeared behind the Jonin leader, his blade held above his shoulder. He brought the blade down, decapitating the man. There was a flash of red, and two more heads rolled on the ground. Naruto uppercutted a chunin making the man fly high in the air, before he jumped and grabbed his head, slamming it on the ground and shattering his skull. Naruto smirked as he punched another man up, and as he fell, bisected him at the waist. He saw a man doing hand seals, but before he could finish, Naruto threw the sword at his neck. Damn, the kid fights like a demon, shouted a janin, before Naruto grabbed him by the face and smashed his skull on his knee. Another janin appeared in front of Naruto. A kanai ready to pierce his heart. A black hole appeared below Naruto, in which the fell through. A second later, he jumped from the ground behind his would be killer, grabbing him as he continued the jump. In midair, the former blonde shifted his body, as to not injure himself. Naruto fell on his feet, and the Kiri Janin on his neck, breaking it. Naruto smirked as he held out his hand, and a seven foot long Nodashi appeared in pale blue flames. Masamune, he though, he made a vertical slash that cleaved a ninja in half from the head to the stomach. Come on, this is hardly any fun, Naruto taunted the remaining ninjas. Entertain me, he shouted, dodging a few kanai and grabbed one, and then threw back at the ninja, piercing the man's neck and severing his spinal cord. 
Water release. Water dragon bullet, shouted a ninja, a giant water dragon forming from a nearby river. It roared before slamming in Naruto, who simply stood there and took the attack directly on his chest. The ninjas were speechless as the boy took a water dragon to the chest and didn't even move an inch back. Naruto swung Masamune horizontally, cutting another ninja down, and then made a diagonal slash, chopping of an arm and half a face of another's one. Hisaki could only watch as the young man in front of her dispatched of her pursuers without so much of a trouble. She watched as her savior cut a man's hands while he was doing hand seals and then decapitated him. A man with a sword swung at Naruto, who simply crouched to avoid the strike. As soon as the sword passed over him, a black, inky clone shot of from Naruto, tackling the swordsman. The original Naruto grabbed him by the ankle and slammed the man on the ground. Naruto spiked his Ryatsu making the few who remained fall to their knees as Naruto looked at them disappointed. He raised his right arm over his head, his hand open. Hundreds of tiny red blades shot up into the sky. Bloody rain. All the blades that had been shot up came raining down on the Kiri ninja, killing most of them. He twitched his hand, and all the blades, scalpels, flew back into his hand. He pointed at a trio of Chunin, Sero. The attack blasted them into oblivion. He walked to the last one who was cowering in fright. Suddenly, a pair of oily black arms appeared from the ground and pulled the man into a black hole. Few seconds later, the man was spat out from a black hole, his neck broken. He looked down on the defeated Nin, Masamune dispelling in pale flames. He had honestly expected more of a challenge, but no matter. He sensed another two presences on a tree, and turned around, his left palm facing the tree. Bloody cross. He felt one presence disappear and the other fade away. One out of two wasn't bad. Shrugging, he began to gather the all he blood in the area to feet, and then absorb the crimson liquid. Then, he turned to the woman he saved, and took a good look at her. She was a tall woman, as tall as male Zabuza 180, with mild long black hair and golden eyes. She had pale skin and a perfect figure. He could see her curves even behind the flak jacket. She used her forehead protector sideways and she had bandages wrapped around her neck like a scarf, too. While Naruto looked at her, Hasaki was doing the same. She had never seen a boy like him before. Judging by his face, he was no older than 14, but he was just a little shorter than her, and his muscles were very well developed for one so young. Maybe he had been trained to be a ninja from young age. That would explain how he took that many janin and chunin by himself. Are you okay, woman? He asked on a polite tone. Why yeah, I'm fine, she said, cursing the stuttering. My name is Hisaki by the way, Momochi Hisaki. You speak like I should recognize the name, Naruto stated, blinking. Have you never read a bingo book? She asked confused. What is a bingo book? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow, making her widen her eyes. But aren't you a ninja? She asked in surprise. No, I am not, he clarified with a smile. I'm not wearing a forehead protector, am I? I thought that you weren't using your forehead protector for the same reason you're wearing only pants, she pointed out, making Naruto look at himself and realize that she was right. Hey, where are my clothes? Naruto asked himself, making Hisaki sweat drop at the sudden change of attitude. Before she could say something, his body turned black and a dark substance surrounded him, disappearing in a few seconds and revealing a now fully clothed Naruto. He was wearing a black trench coat with metal pauldrons, a navy blue dress shirt, black pants and shoes, along with white gloves. How do you do that? Asked a shocked Hisaki. I might not be a ninja, but I have my own, other powers. He clarified. It seems shapeshifting is one of them, he said, flexing his gloved hand. It seems, you don't know your powers? She asked curiously. No, he smiled. To tell you the truth. The powers I used till no were all on pure instinct. Tell me woman, why were those ninja attacking you, just now? Aren't you from the same village? Could you please call me by my name? She growled. I failed to see the problem. You are a woman, aren't you? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Of course. That's not the, then what's the problem? Naruto interrupted her. You're impossible. She muttered, what's your name anyway? I'm Naruto. He paused, Naruto Uzumaki, care to answer my question now? He asked her. Only if you explain how you were able to defeat 13 Janin and Chunin without any ninja training, 
she stated, crossing her arms. Fair enough, but I asked first, Naruto replied as he sat down on a stone. Hasaki nodded while doing the same, and started to explain. Meanwhile, Konohagakure no Sato, what do you mean he's not in village? asked a very pissed of Sarutobi Hiruzen. The boy is not in the village, repeated the Anbu member. Prepare tracking teams and find him, Sarutobi ordered. Start on the village gates. The Anbu nodded and disappeared in a shunshin. Damn, that wasn't supposed to happen, Sarutobi muttered. Hokage same, the advisor are here to see you, said the secretary via intercom. Send them in. Soon the door opened and the Hokage's advisors entered. I don't care, the Hokage said as soon as he saw then, Naruto will be brought to the village, won't be marked as missing nin, executed, killed, banished, imprisoned, conditioned, or whatever it is you want. Now get out, he said. Seeing their teammate was in a bad mood, Homura and Kaharu exited the Hokage's office with scowls on their faces. You know Kuni clearing Hasaki had just finished explaining the bloodline's purge on Kiri and how she planned a coup to overthrow the Mizukage, but failed and was forced to leave Kiri, being followed by the ninjas Naruto killed. So I guess it's my turn, right? He asked rhetorically. Naruto explained who he had found the vessel of the Kiyubi in Konoha, and made a deal with the demon, its freedom in exchange for power. It wasn't a lie, only an abridged version of the facts. When he told her his real age, the brunette was left speechless, he had so much potential as a tool that she is almost drooling. So, what powers do you know you have? She asked, for sure I know that I have enhanced physical abilities and it seems like I received their taijutsu and kenjutsu abilities as well considering how he defeated the ninjas. That is obvious, I also seem to have the ability to move in high speed, the sonido, something called hiero that gives me high endurance, shapeshifting, and that energy attack called sero, along with bloody sword and bloody cross, and power over the shadows and mental control over my scalpels, which are 108, in case you're wondering. I do believe that in time more powers will be revealed to me, Naruto finished. Why do you think that? Hasaki inquired, in the fight, before I fired the Sero, I saw a vision of a guy in white using it, Ulkiora was his name, Naruto explained. The same thing happened before I started to fight, I saw visions of another of my, ancestors, fighting with the bloody sword, and the shadow powers. Ancestors? She blinked. I inherit their powers, so it seemed fitting, Hasaki nodded at the black-haired boy's explanation. So you don't have all your powers now? asked Hasaki. No, but in time, I will, Naruto stayed with certainty. I'm not sure when I'll have another vision, though. Naruto turned around and was about walk away when Hasaki spoke. Um, Naruto? She hesitantly asked, yes. Do you require something, woman? He asked, turning to her. Do you think we can maybe work together? She asked, hoping he would accept. Sure, he said while shrugging. He walked to one of the Kiri Nin's body and took his forehead protector, tying it to his shoulder. Should we go now? She nodded and both started to walk to the Mizu no Kuni. Why are we going to the direction of the village that is trying to kill you? Naruto asked once he realized the direction in which they were going. There's a safe house on a small village south of Kiri that was used by the Seven Swordsmen. There might be a few things we could use, he nodded, as they continued to walk. Why did you take the headband? She asked after few minutes of silence. A headband means I am qualified to be a ninja. Considering I killed them, I feel qualified enough, Naruto explained. She nodded. It was like the graduation exam on Kiri anyways. Well, before she took it. As they walked further into Mizu no Kuni territory, the weather started to get colder, and soon there was snow under their feet as they walked through the woods. The sun was setting when they finally reached their destination a small village surrounded by mountains. I'll take a walk around while you take whatever it is you need from that warehouse, I'll meet you at the center of town in what, half an hour, 45 minutes? He asked her. Why aren't you coming? There's something in this village, something that might be useful. Yes, the safe house, Hasaki deadpanned. It's not the house, it's something elsewhere. Elusive, Naruto explained. I don't know how to explain. Yeah, I noticed, an annoyed Hisaki muttered under her breath before walking to the safe house. An hour later, a pissed off Naruto, who has been followed by a young boy, was walking through the village trying to find his new partner. A good ten minutes later, 
he came across Hasaki trapped inside a water globe which was being held by some mist Anbu. He raised an eyebrow. Care to explain? He asked, looking at the unmoving Kiri Anbu. Just get me out of here, she growled. Shrugging Naruto extended his hand to the Anbu, his palm facing the Kiri Nin, who remained unmoving. A red scalpel shot from his hand, piercing the man's head. The Anbu fell apart in mud and dust, releasing the water prison. Here, he said as he took of his coat and gave to her, it's snowing out here and you're drenched to the bone, she accepted and put the coat one, before noticing the boy hiding behind Naruto. Who's the kid? She asked, his name's Haku, found him on alley, Naruto turned to Haku, show her what you can do. Naruto nudged the boy, who seemed hesitant, don't worry Haku, she's not going to try to kill you. That earned a raised eyebrow from Hisaki who looked at Naruto for answers, just watch, he said. Haku held out his hand and soon the water from Hisaki's prison started to move and change as Haku moved his arms, before it turned into a thin sheet of ice. So that's your, something elusive, the woman asked, Naruto just nodded. Not only I found the boy, but I had another vision, Hisaki looked at him curiously. And, Naruto raised his hand and the Hisaki's sword started to levitate. One of my, ancestors, called it the, force, Naruto explained, absently moving his finger, making the blade turn. I have telekinesis and other mental powers. I knew it was good business to have you around, she said as Naruto dropped her sword and she placed it back on her back. Did you find anything good? Naruto asked as they started to walk. Not a damn thing, only a scroll, but it wasn't useful, she said. I think you meant but it trapped me in a water ball until you came and saved me before I froze to death in there, he asked, to which she only growled and walked faster. Naruto could only chuckle. Six months since Naruto's transformation, we found said person in the middle of a clearing, with his hands on a hansu, and a brunette sitting under a tree, watching him. What the hell is wrong with me? Why can't I do this damn thing? Asked a frustrated Naruto, as he tried, and failed to summon his chakra for the umpteenth time in a course of five hours. And why the hell do I need chakra anyways? It's been six months since we meet and I've been doing just fine. Because if you are strong as you are without using chakra, you can be even stronger if you do, said the brunette who was leaning on a tree. I don't need it, he insisted, true, she said as she got up, well, if you can't use chakra like any competent ninja, just let it go, she muttered to herself as she walked away knowing that he would listen thanks to his advanced hearing. He sighed and sat down, closing his eyes and steadying his breath, he hated when she did that. After fifteen minutes of staying still like a rock, Naruto opened his eyes, instead of the sewer that had been his mindscape, he now found himself in front of a maze. Its walls were black and Naruto could not see where they ended. Ah, Naruto, so you've decided to visit, how very thoughtful of you, said on a mirthful voice behind said blonde. He turned around and found himself facing a tall man wearing red clothes. Alucard, Naruto said, to which the vampire nodded, why's there a maze here? Well, obviously, after you change, your mind change as well, another voice explained. The maze is a representation of your powers. You have them, but you don't know you do, Akabane continued. In time, you'll learn all your powers, thus, the way through the maze. That makes sense. I guess, Naruto then asked, Why are you here? I thought you'd be returning to your world. I was bored, Alucard said like it was common fact, making Naruto sweat drop. And you? Naruto asked, turning to Akabane, the same reason as Alucard san, the man said with a smile. So, why are you here? If I were you, I'd be with that woman with the sword. Well, you see, I was training on using chakra, but I can't do it for my life. So I was meditating and ended up here, explained Naruto. Well, if you have any questions about your powers, maybe we can help you. I've been walking around the maze for some time and I learned quite a few things about the other powers you have, Alucard suggested, and Akabane nodded. Do you know why I can use my chakra? Chakra is the mixture between physical energy present on your body and spiritual energy gained through training. That's what the sage of the six paths knew about it, Akabane recited. Is here anything else? Naruto shook his head. I guess we could walk around and try to find out, suggested Alucard, motioning to the maze. 
Naruto agreed and they started to walk around in the maze of Naruto's mind. Naruto noticed that while some of the walls were black, and others had different colors, and the ones with color had some sort of drawings that depicted Naruto's powers. They spent about 15 minutes walking around, before Alucard stopped in an area which had white walls. He looked around for some time, then called Naruto and Akabane over. There it is, Alucard said, pointing at a part of the wall that explained the basic of Ulkiora's powers. You know, I think it would be good for you to come here once in a while and study your powers more deeply, so you can understand them better. So I know exactly what I'm doing, instead of just following the visions, Naruto said more to himself than to Alucard, but the vampire nodded. Exactly, the Nosferatu said, but regarding you chakra problems, he added, you've been using you spiritual energy constantly, when you use the Sero and the Sonido. Because of that, you spiritual energy and your physical energy, which I believe that man, Brawley, called Ki, have been separated on your body. So instead of having chakra, you have key and spiritual energy. You have to train to learn how to fuse it to use chakra, and unfuse it to use Ulkiora's or Brawley's techniques and powers. Well, I guess I'll inform Miss you can't use chakra like any competent ninja about this new information, then I'll be back here to study my powers. Naruto was about yo walk back, before he realized he was in a maze and asked, um, how do I get back? You wake up, Akabane said, as if it was common knowledge. How am I supposed to wake up? Naruto asked, to which Alucard grinned and punched him. Naruto shot up wake in the clearing, his hand reaching up for a bloody cross, before he realized that Alucard was no longer in front of him, and that he was back. Muttering, damn bastard, he went to find Hisaki, but before he could exit the clearing he had to dodge a lightning ball. What the hell, he turned around to see Akiri Anbu walking from behind the trees. He had two swords that were crackling with lightning. Tell me where the demon bitch is, and I'll let you live, the Anbu said in what Naruto supposed was an attempt a threatening voice. Or maybe, I beat your sorry ass to the ground, and then I take your carcass to her, how about that? Naruto asked as he took a taijutsu stance. Foolish boy. Do you know who I am? I am Raiga, of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. Raiga exclaimed, taking of his mask. So what? Naruto asked before he swung his arm at the man, shooting four scalpels at him. Raiga dodged and shot more lightning balls at him. They stayed like that, dodging and attacking for a few minutes, before Naruto got tired of that and fired a sero at the man, but Raiga dodged again, and shot lightning at Naruto, which hit him in the chest. Naruto felt his body go numb as the electricity coursed through his body. Raiga laughed as he lunged forward, ready to pierce Naruto's body with his swords. There was the sound of metal piercing flesh and Naruto fell, the hole in his solar plexus bleeding as he hit the floor. Raiga laughed even harder, but his eyes widened as a golden pillar of energy enveloped the dead body, before it shot up in the sky and dispersed. As he looked at where the energy pillar had been, his eyes widened even further. Floating a feet from the ground, with a golden, fire-like aura enveloping his bod, stood a changed Naruto. The previously silver streaks of his hair became golden, and his muscles seemed denser than before. His eyes found Raiga's, and Naruto started to laugh maniacally. Kukuku, you really thought something like that was going to kill me? Raiga shot more lightning at Naruto, disbelief written across his face. Naruto simply stood there and took all Raiga's attacks unflinching, thanks to whatever kind of aura that was enveloping his body. Well, you know, I do have to thank you, Naruto said as he slapped a lightning ball away from his face. I had to have a near-death experience to awake this new power, so to express my gratitude to you, I'll give you the first taste of it. Naruto extended his open hand and started to form a green ball of energy. Enjoy it, worm. Eraser cannon, he said as he threw the ball like a bowling ball. Raiga dodged the first one, but he didn't see the second one coming and got hit on the chest. The green sphere hit his chest and exploded, sending the man flying though the clearing and making him drop his swords. Naruto walked to him, and pinned Raiga to a tree as the man tried got up. You're a piece of thrash. How you got in the seven swordsmen is beyond me. Naruto punched Raiga's arm, breaking it with a sickening crunch. Hasaki is far better than you, and so is that fat man with the mummy popsicle. He then broke Raiga's other arm. Thank you for the compliment Naruto, said person spoke from behind him. He turned around to face her, dropping Raiga in the ground. About time you got here. 
I was getting bored with him, and you're a much lovely company. He looked at Raiga. Now, any last words, Raiga? No, I see. Naruto kicked Raiga up, sending him up in the air. Then he fired an eraser cannon at him, disintegrating about half his body. You want to take the bounty on it? He asked, pointing at what was left of Raiga, who had fallen back to the ground in a pool of blood and organ parts, his face set on a pathetic expression of fear and pain. You carry him, I'll look for his swords, she said as she walked to where the fight had started. Naruto grumbled incoherent complaints and used the force to carry the half man back with him, blood dripping out as Raiga's remaining organs fell out his half torso. Like your new powers? Akabane asked suddenly in Naruto's head, making him jump in surprise. You had something to with it, didn't you? My hiero should have stopped the strike? Naruto asked suspiciously. I may have stopped caused a little disruption momentarily, he said innocently but just so you could have a better control of your key, to use your chakra, Alucard explained. Thanks, I guess, it wasn't the most pleasant sensation, Naruto complained, before cutting the mental connection as he walked into the camp. They dropped by a bounty office hidden on a slaughterhouse and claimed the bounty on Raiga the next day, using his head as proof. They thought about selling the Kiba, but Hisaki decided against it. The following weeks were spent by Naruto with training. Right now, Naruto was sitting leaned against a tree, resting after a whole day of training with his recently acquired key. He had asked Alucard if Brawley's memories included more attacks besides the eraser cannon, but it seemed that the man had only variations of said attack like the Omega Blaster or the Blaster Meteor. Both of which he had only trained on a pitiful scale compared to its real power, due to the fact that the former could destroy a planet and the former, an entire village. However, he learned that he could use an energy shield of ki that was strong enough to endure the destruction of a planet, according to Brawley's memories, and that channeling his ki on his limbs had the same effect of chakra, but it was far better. But the fact that he could fly overshadowed all those other things. He has almost lost it when he learned he could fly, and spent two days training both in the real world and on his mind when he passed out of exhaustion. He had his share of bruises and broken limbs, which of course healed instantly, but it still hurt like a bitch. But it was so worth it. He could fly, not just float like Sephiroth or walk in air like Ulkiora. When he was not training with Brawley's powers, he was training with Ulkiora's, especially how to control his Reiatsu and the Sonido focusing in the Cerro to a lesser extent, since Alucard said it was good enough for now, and that he could master it by using in real fights. Besides that, he also spent a lot of time trying to get the two energies to fuse and become chakra. During the nights, he started to meditate instead of sleeping, considering that he did not to sleep per se, just rest. He felt rested either way, but he was more aware when he was meditating, which meant Hasaki didn't need to stay awake to guard anymore, a fact she was most grateful for. The fact it also improved his connection to the force was just a bonus. Too bad he had to deal with Alucard annoying him, making him lose his concentration either by singing some annoying tune or by sending mental images that would have made Jiraiya rich. Naruto learned very fast how to block his mental connection in order to avoid the bored vampire. Alucard suffered from serious boredom, as Naruto's mind was, in his worlds, a complete and utter waste of space, that, in his opinion, lacked any form of excitement or entertainment. Akabane had protested loudly and indignantly at that, when Naruto asked what he wanted or liked to do, the vampire grinned and said, either fighting some ugly humans, or betting the beautiful ones, which was accompanied in very explicit image of Hisaki, that caused Naruto to faint from blood loss. Young he may be, but having the Sandame Hokage was less than cautious to where he left his smutty little orange books. His thoughts were interrupted by the arrival of Haku, who sat beside him and simply stared at the setting sun. After a few minutes of silence, Naruto asked, Haku, what are you doing here? I thought you were training with Hisaki. The boy shrugged, Hisaki-sama was acting weird again, so I asked what was wrong and she said to come here bother you, he said, but if you want me to leave, he added somewhat sadly. There was an awkward silence before Naruto spoke, Hey, don't be sad Haku, I was just curious, you can stay as long as you want. Thanks Naruto-sama, he said, making Naruto groan. There we go again, Naruto muttered, rolling his eyes, Haku, for the last time, it's just Naruto, but if you really can't help but to use some respectful suffix, call me Naruto-sensei. Seeing Haku was about to open his mouth to argue with him, 
Naruto said, no buts. Haku nodded, we have some time before it's dark, and I don't want to deal with Hisaki if she's acting all crazy again, so, up for a spar. Naruto asked Haku, who nodded enthusiastically. Sparring with Naruto was more tiring than with Hisaki, but the older boy was also more fun. When they finished their spar, the last rays of suns were starting to disappear, and both headed back to the clearing where they found Hisaki sharpening her sword. You arrived, she said a bit rashly, did you get any food? She demanded. Naruto raised an eyebrow, do I need to? I was under the impression it was you who was supposed to get it today, he asked, before he had to duck to prevent Hisaki's sword of taking his head. He was about to complain when she glared him and growled, before she went for a kanai. He quickly ran out to find whatever he could. Not for the first time, Naruto wondered on what made Hisaki so mad once every month, and if it, whatever it was, was going to keep happening through the duration of their partnership. Crazy woman. He knew that Alucard knew what was wrong with said woman, but the Nosferatu considered Naruto's misfortunes the only fun he had, so he did his best to give the tall boy as much trouble as he could. Annoying vampire. Akabane probably knew too, but it seemed that the man would rather deal with an annoyed Naruto than with an annoyed Alucard. Can't really blame the man, he did have to practically live with the vampire. Poor bastard. As he took the fish, which he had caught by using the force to simply bring it to him, back to camp, he wondered if Haku would be okay in the company of an irritated Hisaki. He hoped he wouldn't get back to find the woman chasing the kid around again, for whatever reason she had. Poor kid. Six months later. I hate you, you know that. He asked in his mind why can't you just give me the damn power without that stupid condition. Because it's more impressive if you do it my way, another voice said like it was common fact. Are you sure of that? He asked on his mind. Yes the voice in his head answered, Theatrix are a fundamental part of making a name to yourself. Is it strictly necessary? He whined. There's nothing wrong with it. A third voice replied, clearly annoyed by the other two. Now shut up and get done with it. Sai Fine conceded. I miss Hisaki, if she was here, you wouldn't force me to do that. That the only reason you miss her. The second voice mocked, but received no response. He silently walked through the forest south of Mori no Kuni, heading to a bandit camp. It was a rather large camp, or maybe a small base, about the size of a small village with around 350 bandits, plus the 110 guard dogs and an unaccounted number of prisoners. Again he asked himself why, with 364 days in a year, this had to be the one Haku decided to get sick, thus making him take the mission by himself. Thus, making him easy prey for Alucard's, great, theatrical schemes. He walked to the front, and only, gate of the camp. Hey, what the hell are doing in here? Er wanna sumethan. One of the guards asked. Naruto didn't say anything, instead he raised his hand and pointed at the gate. Hey, I'm a talking to, whatever the guard was going to say next was silenced by the green sero that blasted the gateway. Naruto calmly walked inside after killing the two guards, and stood in the middle of the camp, leaning against Masamune. Soon the other bandits walked out of their huts or wherever they were, and circle him. Who the hell are you? One of them asked. You're serious about that speech, aren't you? Naruto asked when he did not receive any new power. Yep. Alucard said happily. What the hell ya want here? Asked the bandit again, but he was silenced when Naruto decapitated him. You've been chosen, to reveal my existence to the world. Naruto announced as he grabbed a knife that was thrown at him and threw back, while he stabbed another bandit that tried to slash him. You'll witness what happens here today, and you'll tell of it later. He said, bisecting another bandit who tried to cut his head, and added, except you won't. He paused dramatically, cause you'll be dead by then. Cuckoo cuckoo, ha 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 ha. Naruto laughed maniacally, especially when visions and memories flooded his head. He saw a hooded man transforming his arms into claws, blades, whips and other shapes, transforming himself and many other things. Er might wanna to check er math. There's more ois than ya. A large bandit laughed before Naruto shifted his arm into a whip and decapitated him, while he dismissing Masamune. Such a shame, you lost your head, a careless bandit who wound up dead, Naruto said with an eerie voice, and I'm the only one allowed to laugh here. Remember that, he
he exclaimed, before he focused and shifted his biomass, making many tendrils burst from his body and impaled many of them. Naruto shifted his hands into claws and ran to the bandits. He cut the first one to ribbons, before he cut another one open, impaling the third with his other hand. Naruto struck another one with both hands, burying them on his stomach before he opened his arms, splitting the man in two. He shifted his biomass back to the whip and struck a bandit's leg, ripping it from his body and throwing it at another. Shifting his arms to a blade, he charged again, cutting the bandit diagonally before decapitating another one. He jumped and shifted his arms into a hammer shape, before he slamming them into the ground, creating a huge shockwave, throwing most the bandits high in the air, except the one who had the poor luck of being squatted like a bug, then he focused and dozens of spikes sprouted from the ground, impaling them. Some bandits unleashed the dogs on him, but the animals, either by instinct or by higher intelligence than their owners, decided Naruto was far too dangerous and ran away, leaving the remaining men to fend for themselves. Naruto smirked coldly when he saw the looks of horror on the bandits' faces, and shifted his arms back to their original shape. He pointed his right hand up, palm facing the sky. Hundreds of red blades flew up, disappearing in the night sky. Bloody rain. 108 scalpels rained down on the remaining thugs. Seeing he was done, Naruto charged a force repulsion and blasted the corpses away, with a couple of huts, some roofs and two horses, to the woods. Any person who went there to investigate the camp had emptied their stomachs, and even the most hard and experienced of them had felt sick. The women imprisoned in the camp would later whisper about the massacre in the camp, how it had rained blood and guts and the devil himself had saved them. Three years later, Naruto entered the bar and scanned the place, before heading to a table in the corner and sitting down, facing the door. The people in the bar stayed away from him. His reputation preceded him, after all, he mused. A few minutes later a short, scarred man sat in front of him. What's this, some kid? I asked for a powerful duo of Miss and Nin, not some brat, the man said as he saw Naruto's face. Naruto simply stood up, towering above the man and grabbed him by his throat, lifting him to eye level. Cease your stupidity and tell me the job, before I decide to snap you neck, scum, he said on a cold voice, before dropping the man and sitting down, looking at him. I I'm s sorry, the scarred man stammered, that kid was damn big and strong, the J job is versus very s simple. Are you capable of speaking without this annoying stutter or do you have some kind of speech impairment? Naruto interrupted the man, he did not like fools. Sorry, the man said, making a noticeable effort to speak clearly to avoid being grabbed by Naruto again, about the job, there's this rich man called Mizuko, who collects ninja stuff and he has this one scroll that the boss wants because, Naruto interrupted him. I don't care why he wants, just tell where it is, he said coldly. Mizuko has a mansion on the chore, but it is heavily guarded by guards that have some advanced sword training, the man said, if you succeed, we'll meet here again two days after it's done, Naruto nodded and left. That night, three shadows moved through the trees, stopping at the sight of a big house by chore. Okay. Here's the plan, said the tallest of the shadows, Haku and I will go through the back while Hasaki creates a diversion in the front, we'll meet in the room where the scroll is located, got it? He asked. The two nodded and soon they moved to their designated spots. Back of the house, four guards were talking while they patrolled the house. Before either could blink, a shadow appeared from the ground, grabbed one of the guards and pulled him into a black hole. Seconds later, the man appeared again beaten up and dead. One of them was pulled into the night by a whip-like tentacle, and the other two heard the telltale sounds of metal ripping flesh. They never saw the shadow on the roof as he drew several sanban. Naruto just watched as another guard slumped and fell on the ground. He smirked before he made his way to the wall and walked it up, before opening the window using the force, allowing him and Haku to enter. Front Door the two guards standing guard in the front door and the other down patrolling cursed as a mist rolled in. They absolutely hated when there was mist. Soon the sound of bodies hitting the floor was heard as Hisaki soundlessly and flawlessly executed the guards. She them set some explosive tags on the door and detonated it. Other guards rushed to the front while she re-entered the mist, hiding herself. She cut a guard's head, following by another by the waist. She was surprised however 
when they channeled chakra into their blades like samurai. She paused and analyzed their stance, finding it more like the samurai from the Iron Country than any other. Soon more guards showed up, making it about twenty-five men in the area. She cursed, decapitating another one. Inside the house, Naruto and Haku moved through the shadows, finding little to no opposition as they moved further inside the mansion. They reached a large corridor at lead to the room where the scroll supposedly was. There were about two dozens of guards in the corridor, channeling chakra to their swords. Naruto grinned. Naruto used the force to levitate two of them and break their necks, and then threw their bodies on the others. He was about to summon some scalpels, when he had a vision. The sage was fighting a giant beast, and the beast would attack him with its tails, then he extended his arms and called, Shinra Tensai, while channeling chakra to his eyes and hands. The beast was repelled away from him, together with anything else in the vicinity. The sage then would do the same movement, but calling, Bansho Tenen, making the beast come to him. Naruto smirked as he followed the example on his vision, unknown to him, his eyes had become purple with black rings, and called out the name of the jutsu. Shinra Tensai, heavenly subjugation of the omnipresent god, me likes it. Sounds like fun. Alucard decided to express his opinion. The guards were pushed back by an invisible force, before Naruto put his hand in the ground and red and black tendrils burst from the ground, impaling them. While Naruto was playing with gravity, Haku was dodging the guards' sword slashes while disabling them with his senbon. Suddenly Haku heard a swoosh behind him and turned around to see a sword about to strike him. He closed his eyes and prepared himself for the strike, but it never came. He opened his eyes to see the man's head fall of his neck. You okay, Haku? Naruto asked, checking the boy for any injuries. The boy nodded as the blood in the area started to move to Naruto's feet as he absorbed it. Haku never understood why he did that, and when he asked Naruto, he said it was instinct, and to ask him later, preferably after he himself found out the reason. What's wrong with your eyes, Naruto sensei? asked Haku as he noticed the change on Naruto. What do you mean? Aren't they the same as always, blue with a slit pupil? Naruto tilted his head to the side. No, they're a freakish purple with black rings, the boy answered. You're two, ten meters tall, have cat eyes, you didn't age a day for the past four years, you shot tentacles, tendrils. I'm not a goddamn squid. From your body, and now your eyes look like a target. Haku listed. Yes, you're freakish. He answered after a pause when he pretended to thought about it. Naruto just grumbled about kids being too smart for their own good, as they walked to the door. They stopped in front of it and stared at the door. I have a bad feeling about this, said Haku as both walked to the door. I sense a trap, Naruto replied, next move? asked Haku. Spring the trap, the tall boy said like it is the most common fact. Seeing Haku's surprised look, Naruto explained. A trap is only a trap if you don't know about it, he said sagely. But Hasaki sama that a trap is any kind of situation you are not ready for. Well, he said, trying to think of something, uh, she's not here, is she? Naruto asked, before using the force to unlock the door. The two walked into a big room full of displays with swords, katanas, spears and all sorts of weapons, as well as two big bookshelves, with books, of course. And in the end of the room, illuminated by the light coming from the windows, there were scrolls. Naruto guessed the scroll he needed is there, so he started to walk to it. Suddenly, the light snapped on and he found himself and Haku surrounded by samurai. Real, armor-wearing, katana-welding, Iron Country samurai. About two dozen of them. And they looked angry. Well, as angry as you can look when you wear full body armor. Oh great, just what I needed, Naruto said while rubbing his temples. Well, well, I was expecting the demon couple from Kiri, not the bloody angel and his kid, said an arrogant voice. But I guess you'll do. From behind the samurai, a short, skinny man with bald head wearing an expensive suit said. Demon couple of Kiri. What the fuck you're talking about midget? asked Naruto. Naruto sensei. Everyone is a midget compared to you, Haku pointed out, but Naruto shushed him. You don't know? Well, it is a new on the bingo book anyway, the man said, you are called the bloody angel in the bingo book, you know that, right? 
That name came from the fact that he had gained black wings after gaining Sephiroth's materia powers manifested. Of course you do, where was I? Oh yes, and considering you work with the demoness of the bloody mist, and you have that Kiri headband, even if they say they never heard of you, someone had the idea of calling you the demon couple of Kiri. He said with a laugh, now you have a kid? What's he called? Little devil of the mist? He asked, laughing even more. That until he started to choke. Worthless trash, Naruto said as he threw the man across the room. Now, for the tin man, he said, looking at the samurai. He was about to summon Masamune, but he felt a tug in his mind and instead of the seven foot Nodashi, Aokatana in a blue scabbard appeared in his hand. As soon as it appeared, images of a fighting style flashed through his mind. Five samurai rushed to Naruto, who used his sheathed sword to block a strike to his head and then another to his midsection. Naruto unsheathed Yamato and made a slash to the throat of the first samurai, making his blood spray all over himself, before sheathing the sword again. He dodged another slash before he bisected the samurai by his waist, then he slammed the scabbard on the head of another one, effectively knocking him out, before sheathing his katana. Other two tried to attack him from the sides, but Naruto jumped, making them cut each other's arms. Naruto flicked Yamato's scabbard, cleaning it of the blood, before he heard the sounds of armored people moving as more samurai rushed to his position. Naruto was surrounded by another five samurai. One of them tried to cut Naruto's head, but he ducked and cut the man's leg off, then he used the scabbard to trip another samurai, which was easy thanks to the huge pool of blood in the floor, before re-sheathing Yamato. He dodged a strike to his side, before unsheathing Yamato and swinging it diagonally, taking the sword arm of the samurai while he slammed the scabbard on another's neck, crushing his windpipe. He quickly beheaded the last one standing, blood flowing like a fountain, before he walked to the one he tripped, who was about to get up, and stomped his head, crushing it despite the helmet. Meanwhile, Haku was fighting the last four samurai. He blocked a sword strike with his senbon, before the dodging another vertical slash. He knew his senbon were almost useless against their armor, so he had to bid his time until he could found a weakness on it. He kicked a samurai who missed a vertical slash, before he saw an opportunity. He used his senbon to strike the man's neck, putting him on near death state. He ducked from another slash, before a giant sword cleaved the samurai from head to the waist. Hasaki swung Kubikiribocho horizontally and bisected another samurai, before she had to block a strike. Haku kicked the attacker and Hasaki took the opportunity to slash him in half. Naruto walked to them, oh, hey there Kiriheim, so you decided to grace us with your lovely precinct, he was interrupted by a large sword almost cutting his head off, hey, what, he had to dodge again as Hasaki tried to strike him, hey, stop that, woman, he screamed as he ran, Hasaki following him, trying to take his head, his legs or anything else she could aim at. You brainless, reckless, careless, immature, irresponsible and insufferable idiot, she screamed back, you could have died. Or worst, Haku could have died, she said as she chased him around, swing her sword madly. Haku just shook his head at their antics. He wasn't worried, it wasn't the first time anyways. Eventually Hasaki stopped chasing the silver streaked boy, you're lucky I don't kill you, she said angrily, he just shrugged. Su, Naruto started, you were worried about me and Haku dying, ahim. He asked, Hasaki growled at the tall boy. No, just Haku, she said, and don't call me Haim, she added angrily, before she started to collect anything useful from the room with said boy. Meanwhile Naruto, grumbling about, insensitive Himes hurting his feelings, walked to Mizuko and slapped the man till he woke. Mizuko opened his eyes to find himself looking at a pair of cold cyan cat-like eyes. When he recognized the man as the angel, he did the only thing he could when you find out the people you wanted to kill were not only alive, but had you at their mercy. He screamed like a little girl. Shut up scum. Naruto ordered. Now, you have two options. He extended his hand in front of the man's face and raised one finger. I can kill you and find out here your money is, or... He paused and stared at his finger, like he was in deep thought, oh wait. That's the only option, Naruto let out a psychopathic laugh, which only scared the man further. Then he extended his hand and red and black tendrils consumed the man. He had been told by Alucard that he shouldn't absorb the blood of the weak, 
instead consume their biomass to find out whatever he wanted. Naruto asked why, but the vampire did not say. Naruto saw the man's bank accounts, the passwords, vaults and more. Hey, take a look at that, screamed Hisaki, making both Naruto and Haku jump in surprise. What was that Haim? The taller one asked. The midget has about three summoning scrolls here, she said excited, not bothering to tell him to don't call her Haim. Naruto and Haku hurried to her side. Let's see, we have ravens, polar bears and, what's that? She asked, pointing at a scroll which the summon name was impossible to redo an incredibly bad calligraphy of the person who wrote it. I think it says brats, or is it rats? Naruto said after taking a look at the scroll. Hasaki took it from his hands. It says crabs, you idiot, said Hasaki, after examining the scroll more closely. Naruto's mouth formed and, oh. So, who gets which? Asked Haku. Naruto-kun, you can't sign it. Akabane's voice sounded in Naruto's head, before he could open his mouth. I don't need it. Sephiroth had much better summons than a crab, or a bear or a raven, remember? Naruto asked the vampire. But I'm curious, why can't I have it? The contract depends on blood, right? Asked Alucard, joining the conversation. Naruto nodded his head on his head. Every time you consume someone's blood, it changes your own blood, so you'd have to sign it over and over again. Say to Lucarda Plus, summoning animals is for weaklings. The one with my powers doesn't need such thing. Ahay added, arrogantly putting emphasis on the my powers part. I really doubt your powers can be any better than summoning a dragon, said Naruto. Until you can prove me, I still think Sephiroth is better than you. Oh, don't worry, Naruto. I can prove it, though the Nosferatu with a smirk, as he looked in the darkness of the boy's mindscape, and his smirk widened. You guys decide that, I'll go look for anything valuable, Naruto said. After that, Naruto healed any injures Hasaki or Haku had with a quick cure and they left. Two years later, a small group of eight people walked through a swamp, knee deep in the dirt water and mud of it. Five wore crimson samurai armors four of them carrying a litter while the last samurai walked in the front, a young boy walking beside him, wearing a blue fighting kimono. The last two, a tall man with black and silver hair, was walking with a black-haired woman in the back of the group. Who had the freaking brilliant idea of accepting this freaking job again? Oh yes, it was you, Naruto said, shooting Hisaki an annoyed look while he tried to walk through the mud, it will be easy, you said. It'll be the best job so far, you said. And look where we are now. In a fucking marsh, knee deep in this crap, because of those armored fags, who, for some unfathomable reason, don't want us to walk over the water like the freaking ninja we are. He had learned quite a few obscenities in his travels. Hasaki, while annoyed as he was, simply ignored his rant, that simply consisted in little more than blaming her and insulting the marsh the guards, the job and any other thing he could find to insult. Naruto was about to go on with another round of cursing and complaining, when he heard something. He looked at Hisaki, and nodded slightly to the side, to which she responded with a nod of her own. Oi fags, I'll be right back, Naruto said, and started to walk to the direction of the sound. When he got out of their sight line, he started to walk over the water to wherever it was that whoever made the sound was. He cursed and wished he had consumed any swamp animals, it would be so much easier. He soon found what made the noise. It was a genin team, though Naruto did not recognize the village symbol. He faintly recalled seeing it in Konoha, but could not remember what it stood for. It was a swirl pattern resembling a whirlpool. After a quick scan he realized they were no threat. The janin, a redhead woman, was obviously injured, if her bleeding, bandaged side was any indication. The three genin, two black-haired boys who seemed twins, seemed hurt, but no severely, and the girl, blonde with blue eyes that Naruto found strangely familiar, looked like she was in no better shape. He knew he had no business with them and was about to leave, despite the sensation that he should stay, but one of the twins seemed to be a censor and alerted the redhead of his presence. Whoever is there, come out now, the janin said, sounding pretty confident despite her injuries. I guess I was found. Pity, Naruto said as he walked in front of them. When he came in vision, one though went through the janin's head, crap. Why are you here? She asked, sounding braver than she felt. 
The bloody angel was no pushover, and she was injured. I was taking a walk, when I heard something, then I came to check it out, then I saw it was you and I was about to go my way, but then you called me and here I am. Naruto said, now the question is, why are you here? I could consider you a threat to my mission, and then I would have to kill you and the brats. You would never beat Kashina Sensei. She is the best ninja in the whirlpool, said one of the twins. Oh, is that so? So that's their village, whirlpool, thought Naruto, Kashina. I've heard that name before. I've killed three and defeated other two of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, amongst the best Anbu level shinobi in the hidden mist, so I think I can handle the best ninja of a minor village, Naruto dismissed. T that can't be true, said the other twin. It seems stupidity runs in the family, Naruto thought. Tweedledee and Tweedledum don't seem believe me. Care to confirm my claim, Kashina-san? Naruto asked. Actually, don't bother, I don't give a fuck if they believe me or not. Well, I'll be going now, he said as he turned around, but something made him turn back. He felt like he was following someone's commands, as he pointed at them and say, Kiraja, Naruto turned around again and walked away as their injuries were healed by his spell. When they got over their shock, Naruto had long disappeared in the swamp, rejoining his group and resuming his ranting and cursing, but his thoughts were focused not in insulting anything in front of him, but in the strange group he had found, more specifically in where he had seen the whirlpool symbol in Konoha, where he heard the name Kashina, and why the blonde was so familiar. And why, in hell's name, he had cured them. It went against his badass reputation. Kashina sensei, who was that? Asked the girl, looking at where Naruto was standing. The bloody angel, Kashina replied. Now I know why they call him angel, she added, more like she was thinking out loud than speaking to them. Two years after the last chapter. How come you're good at everything you do, except choosing missions? Naruto asked for the tenth time in that evening. Quit your whining, and I'm not that bad. Hisaki said with a slight pout. Let's see the list, Naruto said, producing a long sheet of paper from somewhere. There was one in that frozen land, another one in the middle of an insect-infested jungle, another one was in a rocky, hot-as-hell desert, there was that other one that I had to carry the client's pet tiger, a freaking tiger, for three fucking hours, and of course, my favorite of all time, the fucking marsh. Two fucking times, he listed. He's right you know. Haku pointed out, joining the conversation. Not you, too, she said, crossing her arms. Then there was that one on which we had to escort the guy to a volcano, that one that we had to steal a beehive, and the one in that desert island, and the one that had the crazy lady who tried to get Haku to marry her son. Her fucking son, Naruto listed on, ignoring the evil glare she was giving him. And now, we're in a freaking boat, on the fucking basement of the boat, I didn't even knew boats had basements, going to some backwater land, and for what? Some shitty pay to kill an old man for that idiot midget. That's so beneath me, Naruto was about to go on, but a glare that promised great amounts of pain from Hisaki shut him up. The bloody angel his ass. Women were far scarier than him by a mile, Naruto thought. I can't help but agree with you. Integra was scarier than the Iscariot priest, when she wanted to be, Alucard added his input. The great Alucard, the no-life king, a monster whose darkness cast a shadow upon darkness itself, was afraid of a woman. Naruto laughed, you're pathetic. Hasaki is reaching for her sword, Alucard said with a hidden grin. Holy fuck, run, Naruto was about to panic when he noticed that Alucard's statement was untrue, you vampiric asshole. I'm going in there and I'm gonna kick you pale ass. Oh my, I'm so scared right now, the vampire said mockingly. Naruto decided to ignore the vampire in favor of trying to find anything to do. That boat was boring, and now he sounded like Alucard. Just great. Naruto eventually set for going back to the basement and trying to get some unnecessary sleep, using his newly acquired fedora hat, black in color and was wide as Alucard's, to shadow his eyes. An hour and a half later, he was awakened by the unpleasant sensation of being hit with the flat side of Hisaki's kubikiribocho. Her favorite method of awaking him up in the rare times he slept, much to Alucard's sadistic amusement. Why do you always do that? It hurts, you know. He asked rubbing his head. No it doesn't, 
I know for a fact that you once had your arm severed and acted like it was just a minor inconvenience. If you can handle that, you can handle being hit, she said in a matter-of-fact tone. Why did you wake me up anyways? He asked, rolling his eyes. We got visitors, she answered. Are they scantily clad women with big titties? No, said an annoyed Hisaki, reaching for her sword. And like that, you lost me, Naruto said with a smirk, before he had to dodge a sword strike. They're old underlings, the demon brothers. Somehow they found me and want to work with us, she explained, pointing at a duo of people close to the door. Oh joy, Naruto mumbled, before he looked at the so-called, demon brothers, why I fell we've aggregated pathetic lifeforms to our group. He asked finally, making the rest of them face fall. Well, they do know who's in charge here, right? He asked, eyeing them. Yes, me, of course, Naruto was about to open his mouth to complain when she added, or do you disagree? She asked with a raised eyebrow, her tone making clear that she better get the right answer. No ma'am, you're completely right, as always, he drawled out boredly, before he left to take a walk. Why is it that everyone around me has an alias with some variation of the word demon? Naruto wondered as walked around the ship. Come to think about it, you had a demon inside you as well, kinda funny, don't you think? Akabane asked back, it's like karma, you get rid of one, real demon, and you get a load of fake ones. His internal conversation was cut short by the arrival of the boat in Nami no Kuni. Once out of the ship, followed some samurai wannabe thugs to a room, where a fat man in a suit is sitting behind a desk. They say your group is the best there is, so I hope you can do it. He said arrogantly, Naruto internally frowned, but said nothing. Well, whatever, just kill the old man and try to keep the body recognizable after you're done. I'll hang him in town, Gato said sounding more like a rant, yes, we'll show them no one crosses me and lives. What does the old man looks like? Naruto asked as he sat down, and where is he? How am I supposed to know? Figure it out yourself, the short man answered. Naruto's eye twitched, but again, he didn't say anything. Naruto tuned the conversation out when Gato and Hisaki started to argue about the payment. A few years ago, they had agreed it was best to left it to Hisaki to negotiate the price, as she was less prone to break necks when people pissed her off. Naruto did not really want to do this job. It was more like working as a common thug than anything, and it was beneath him. Beneath them all, actually. But he could not simply don't do it. Hisaki needed the money to overthrow the Mizukage, or so she said. He could take the Mizukage any day, but no, they had to do it her way he was brought out of his musing when Alucard pointed out that Gato was making Hisaki angry, which meant he would have to intervene before heads started to roll. And he wasn't talking about hers. I will not pay that much for two idiots, a kid, a woman and a taller idiot, Gato exclaimed angrily, banging his fist in the desk, his thugs reaching for their swords in a failed attempt of intimidation. Naruto shifted in his seat. A second later blood gushed all over the room as the Gato's thugs' arms and or heads fell off. What did you say? asked Naruto. I didn't quite hear you, I was distracted by your guards. I think they dropped something, he added condescendingly, while he grabbed a severed arm and used the sleeve to clean some of the fresh blood on his shoe. Hisaki grinned and Haku acted like nothing was wrong. They were used to it by now. The demon brothers had eyes the size of saucers, having never seen someone so fast and or brutal before. Gato was frozen with fear so he didn't do anything for the first 10 seconds. Then he snapped at Naruto, shouting about killing his men and other things that Naruto ignored in favor of trying to remove a blood stain on his shoe. The midget doesn't seem very smart, speaking to you like that after you killed everyone in less than a second, Akabane mused, more to himself than to Naruto. Hey, double a, that was Naruto's way of calling both Alucard and Akabane did you go through my memories to find out where I saw the whirlpool symbol back in Konoha? Naruto asked him, remembering the request he made to Alucard two years ago. Yes, of course we did, Naruto waited for Alucard to continue, but the vampire stayed silent. So, Naruto asked, trying not to sound annoyed. So what, Alucard faked ignorance. Where did I see that symbol? Everywhere, it was pretty common in the leaf. 
It was in the back of the flak jackets and in the sleeves of the Chunans and Jonans shirts Akabane told him, but, interestingly enough, it was also in the back of that hideous orange jacket the Hokage bought for you. Naruto hemmed before asking, and what about the redhead's name and the blonde girl? Alucard stayed silent for a moment, earning a raised eyebrow from Naruto. Unknown him, Alucard and Akabane were discussing if they should tell Naruto the truth. Eventually they decided against it, for now. Later, they would speak of it, when Naruto didn't have to worry about the fat pipsqueak that was still complaining about loss of his men. I did not found anything yet. These things are a bit more specific than the spiral symbol, and there are a lot of memories in your mind. Sensing Naruto was about to argue, Alucard added, but I found something very interesting about some new powers. Oh, do tell, that sage, he could absorb ninjutsu. Carry on, it should activate by a dire need to protect yourself from a powerful force. I mean really powerful, if you get hit by real lightning, you'll probably get it. You're kidding, right? Naruto asked rhetorically, he had, of course, tested the limits of his regeneration by jumping off cliffs, ripping his own arm and other things, but he wasn't planning on get hit by lightning. That was insane, even for Alucard. It is not the only way, I admit it. But if you'd rather find a biju and have it attack you with a tailed beast ball, by all means, knock yourself out, Naruto could feel the grin Alucard had in the moment. He just ignored the vampire planning how he was going to get his new powers. Are you listening to me? Gato screamed, snapping Naruto from his thoughts. No, he said simply, why? Are you going to do something about it? Naruto asked, tapping his fingers absently on his knee. Whatever, just go kill the old man. Gato shouted trying to hide his fear, pointing at the door. After they left Gato and got to the room where they would stay, the group started to plan how they were going to find and kill Tazuna. Eventually, after much arguing between Naruto and Hisaki, it was decided that Naruto and the Demon Brothers would go try to find Tazuna, while Hisaki and Haku would stay in Nami, in case he came back before the trio could find him. The night before the trio departure, Naruto went to the higher ground he could find in Nami, and started to fire furs and faragas at the sky. After some time, Lightning was cracking the blackened sky, and Naruto walked in the sky and waited. Naruto didn't have to wait too long, as he saw a lightning bolt coming right at him. Acting on instinct, Naruto brought his hands up, in order to protect himself from it. When he didn't feel anything, Naruto opened his eyes to see the lightning bolt being sucked by his hand. Then, he felt energy course through his arm. Blinking, Naruto spread his fingers, trying to understand what was happening. He raised his arm again, and lightning began to strike at the extended limb once again. Each time, the electrical bolt simply disappeared as it touched his hand, and then he would feel the energy on his arm. After some time, Naruto realized what was happening. Since he couldn't turn the electricity in chakra, the energy absorbed was powering up his nervous system, enhancing the neural synapses of his body. Maybe I can take this energy and return it. When lightning attacked again, Naruto focused the energy on his hand. Feeling it enter his arm, and then holding it there, Naruto shot it back. Instead of a lightning bolt, from Naruto's fingertips, a stream of lightning shot out, oh. After his little adventure, Naruto silently returned to Gato's hideout base. He walked in the room they had been given, and saw that the demon brothers were sleeping, Naruto smirked. He grabbed one ankle of each, and discharged a low charge, barely strong to do anything but shock them. Naruto laughed as both screamed in surprise, jumping off their beds. He stopped laughing however, when a low, yet feminine, growl is heard. Naruto paled as he slowly turned around. He cursed everything known to man as the face of an angry Hisaki met his. Apparently he had awakened her. That was a very bad idea. A static boom was heard as Naruto grabbed the brothers and disappeared, barely dodging a sword strike. Naruto wondered why, when he is almost killed by her, the only thing he could think of was how cute she looked with bed hair. Maybe it was the images Alucard was sending him, Naruto wasn't quite sure. I'm bored, a whiny voice said from a tree. I don't care, answered another voice in the tree. I'm bored, too, a third voice spoke, sounding much like the first one. Again, I don't care, the second voice replied. I'm, 
The first voice was interrupted. I don't fucking care, he snapped, now shut the fuck up before I start to fucking hurt you, Naruto screamed. But I, Maizu, fuck this shit, I'm out of here, Naruto complained, before he jumped from that tree to another one. He sat down on a branch and continued to keep an eye on the road to Wave. They had found out that the old Matazuna was in Konoha, and that he would go back to Wave in that afternoon. They were watching the road for three hours now, and the demon brothers had been complaining the whole time. When he heard a, Hey Gozu, I'm bored, from the other tree, Naruto groaned and slammed his head on a tree branch, she put me with those two on purpose, I just know it. Naruto's advanced hearing picked something up, and he decided to check it. Maybe there was another way to wave, or the old man was going to stop somewhere. Hey, moron brothers, I'll be right back, if the old man comes this way, don't screw it, Naruto warned, before he disappeared with a sonido. Naruto appeared in an old road, barely recognizable in the grass, but it was there. He looked around, trying to find the reason for the noise. He didn't have to look much, as soon a volley of kanai made its way to his direction. Naruto simply batted them aside with the force. He looked at the direction of which they were coming and found out the reason for the noise and the kanai. Four hunter nin masks were staring at him. Three of them jumped and circled Naruto, who just grinned in return. The one who didn't jump quickly made a few hand seal and shot a lightning jutsu at Naruto. Raising his hand, he simply absorbed the jutsu. Naruto grinned as he felt the jutsu turn from lightning chakra to regular chakra, and then dilute itself into his own chakra pathways. Using the distraction caused by his little trick, Naruto dropped on his back, falling inside a black portal. He appeared behind the hunter nin which had used to lightning jutsu. Naruto grabbed the man by his shoulders, keeping him in place while an inky shadow appeared from the ground and grabbed the struggling man, dragging him into a black portal in the ground. Before his teammates could react, Naruto shot a scalpel from each hand, piercing the throats of another two of his opponents. The last hunter nin turned around, ready to bolt away. He never saw a red and black whip-like appendage coming to his direction. The last thing the hunter nin felt was something wrapping around his neck, before his head was severed from the rest of his body. While Naruto was killing hunter nin, the demon brothers had prepared a trap for the old man. They killed the Jonin and charged at Tazuna. One down, started Maizu. Two to go, continued Gozu. They were about to attack when the dead Jonin appeared behind them and knocked them unconscious. After tying them up and confronting the old man about it, the Jonin called for Anbu to retrieve the captured duo. The Genin team continued their way to wave. Had Kakashi paid attention, he would have heard a faint whistling coming in that direction but other things occupied his thoughts, smutty things. The Genin team walking to wave consisted in a black-haired boy wearing a blue shirt with a fan on it, a girl with pink hair wearing a red dress with a white circle, a boy with brown hair with a dog on his head and lastly, a silver-haired Jonin who was reading a book with only one eye. As they walked, there was a rustling on a bush, which made the dog run into it. The dog came back a few seconds later with a white rabbit on its mouth. Kiba Control your mutt, look at what he did to the poor rabbit, screamed the pink-haired girl. Kiba and Sakura started to argue, while Sasuke just ignored it. Kakashi however was thinking about the rabbit. It was white, so it meant, his eyes widened. Get down, Kakashi screamed as he grabbed Tazuna and ducked, avoiding a giant clever-like sword that buried itself in a tree. A black-haired woman wearing stripped purple-ish pants with no shirt, just a bikini top of the same color. In his mind, Kakashi wasn't sure if he should enjoy the view or curse the client for lying to them. He decided to do the former, much to Hisaki's annoyance at seeing his only eye focus below her neck. Few minutes earlier, Naruto was calmly walking back to where he left the demon brother, whistling a tune he had picked from Alucard, which the name he did not remember. His whistling came to an abrupt end when he saw the brothers, unconscious and tied in the middle of the road. Naruto focused on the force and probed Gozu's mind to find out what happened. He was about to wake the two idiots the most painful way possible, when five Konoha Anbu dropped from the trees. Oh joy, hey Alucard, do you think Hasaki received the message saying the old man was going to wave today? Naruto asked as he dodged a sword strike by a bear-masked Anbu. 
I guess Alucard answered with a shrug, as Naruto grabbed the bear's arm and broke it, before he punched the man in the chest, his hand piercing through the man's torso, crushing his heart along the way. Good, so she'll be waiting for us, which means she will see the old man and kill him for me, Naruto thought as he leaned back and crouched to avoid a horizontal sword strike from a bird-masked Anbu close to him. As he crouched, an inky clone shot from his body, kicking the Anbu on the chin, before dissolving into black ink-like substance. Naruto then kneeled the nin in stomach, before grabbing his head and breaking his neck. Why worry, you can take care of those guys and get to the old man, Naruto made a grabbing gesture towards a tiger-masked Anbu, followed by a crushing motion. A loud, sickening crunch was heard as the man's ribcage shattered under Naruto's force grip. I'm not sure, those guys are Anbu, fighting those other two might take some time. Time I don't have, Naruto explained as he dodged a great fireball from a dog-masked Anbu. I beg to differ, may I suggest something, use that repelling attack from the sage, summon some of Virgil's swords and after that, if needed, fire some Saros or Eraser Cannon's Akabane butted in the conversation. Eagle jumped at Naruto's side and kicked him, but Naruto blocked the strike with his arm, then fire a point-blank Saro at him, but it was dodged by the Anbu. Naruto extended his arms and called, Shinra Tensai. As the two nins were blasted away, Naruto summoned four ethereal swords, that was a good plan, Naruto conceded, then used a Bansho Tenon and when the Anbu started to flew back at him, he shot the swords at them, impaling Dog in the stomach and Eagle in the shoulder. Seeing that Eagle was still alive, Naruto used the force to summon two of the ANBU's katanas, jumped and kicked the Anbu in the chest, slamming him to a tree. Naruto dashed through the air to him and impaled his arms in the tree, crucifying him. Your grasp in Thetrix is improving. Crucifying your opponents. I admit I had not thought of that, Alucard praised. Thanks. I guess Naruto said as he walked to the Moron brothers and kicked their heads, as to awaken them. When they woke up and saw Naruto standing in the middle of the clearing, five dead bodies around, and staring at them, the eerie blue eyes gleaming angrily under the shadow provided by his hat, there was only one though in their heads. Fuck. Back with old man Tazuna. Kakashi of the Sharingan, the man who copied a thousand techniques, Hisaki said as she leaned Kubikiribocho on her shoulder, it will be an honor to fight you. Hisaki Momochi, the demoness of the bloody mist, Kakashi said, Team protect the client, the man instructed as he lifted his headband. Oh, the great Sharingan, so soon? She asked. But first, tell me copycat, how were you able to defeat my associate? You mean the demon brothers? It was easy, actually, Kakashi said as he took a kanai, but inwardly he frowned at the question. She could not really hope the demon brothers to defeat him, could she? Hasaki's eyebrow quirked at that, the demon brothers. I'm not talking about them, they're morons, I'm talking about my bloody angel, she smirked seeing Kakashi's surprise, though he quickly hid it. He wasn't there, I think he dumped you, Kakashi joked. Hasaki scowled, lifting her blade. Conversation time was over and the fight begun. At first, Hasaki was easily dominating the fight, even coming close to killing Tazuna for a few times. Eventually she was able to trap Kakashi in a water prison though he was freed by Sasuke and Kiba, who hid a man-beast clone in the shadow of a Fuma shuriken. With that Kakashi had the opportunity to use his Sharingan and the tide of battle turned. The demoness of the bloody mist was overwhelmed and she would have been killed had not been by Haku posing as a hunter nin, so it's basically the cannon fight. Haku dropped Hasaki in the ground, leaning against a tree, before moving to remove the needles in her neck. He was about to grab the first needle when Hasaki's hand stopped his. I'll do it myself, she said, removing the needles, damn Haku, you're brutal. Too much like Naruto, if you ask me, but effective as well, she added, rubbing her neck. Sorry, but your neck was the easier place to hit. Plus, Naruto sensei would kill me if I scarred your, in his own words, beautiful body, Haku said with a chuckle. Damn right kid, said a familiar voice behind them. Haku turned around and Hisaki looked up to see Naruto sitting on a tree branch, the still tied up demon brothers under his arm. The silver streaked boy dropped the brothers unceremoniously on the ground, before jumping himself, landing with a foot on each of their heads. I see Kakashi was a bit too much for you, E.H. Kiriheim. Well, 
No bother, we'll get him later, Naruto said. Where were you anyway? I could have used your help with the copycat, she asked. Blame those idiots, he pointed at the demon brothers. The morons tried to surprise Hitaki Kakashi by hiding in a goddamn puddle, in the middle of the freaking summer. The brothers had the decency of looking ashamed of their poorly thought trap. Hasaki muttered, morons, under her breath, but said nothing more. How much time till she can fight again? Naruto asked, turning to face Haku. I don't know for sure, a week, maybe two, he answered, but why does it matter? Can't you just kill the old man and get done with it? He asked his sensei. I could, and would, but miss, swordsman honor, here probably wants to kill the scarecrow herself, Naruto explained, isn't that right, Kiriheim? Damn right I will, and don't call me that, she said, glaring at Naruto, but he just waved it off. Shouldn't it be swordswoman honor? Haku asked, Naruto looked with a raised eyebrow, just shrugging his shoulders, something Hisaki did as well. Can you walk? He asked, walking closer to the woman, who shook her head in a negative way. Naruto picked her up bridal style, much to her surprise and said, turning to Haku, see you at Gatos, and don't bother with the moron brothers, he added. With that the taller boy disappeared with a static boom. The brothers pleaded to Haku help them, but he knew better than disobeying his sensei, so he just shrugged and used the shunshun to get back to Gato's base. That night, when it started to rain, Haku asked about the demon brothers, Naruto said he, forgot, about them, but wasn't going to get out in the rain, saying he might get sick. The younger boy knew his sensei couldn't get sick, but decided against voicing that. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.